POSIX JavaScript uh, runnables uh, that, that's been around in the Windows world for quite some time. But anyway, with Windows, Windows NT and Windows XP and its uh, brethren and brothers, uh, it's perfectly possible to use Notepad to edit. Uh, you know, you need an advanced editor in order to do this sort of thing. So Notepad is actually the way to go. Let me just see if I can um, give this a try. Um, let me just type out, I've got a source JavaScript here, okay? So we've got source JavaScript right now. You'll notice um, I am saying I've got an integer j, an integer k, and then some integer foo, we'll just make it up, is equal to the sum of the j and k. And then we're just going to use um, uh, an advanced logging feature. Now, in the Windows environment, when you do the console.log, you get the output right in your console, which is what console logging is all about. So, but that's what we're going to do. So, we're going to use Notepad in order to edit this source. And with Notepad as my, as my editor, um, uh-oh, did I not get that right? I thought for sure I had Notepad there. Just a second. Oh, there we go. I guess I typed it wrong, Notepad. So I've got an integer j, an integer k, and, and I didn't set these equal to anything, so I'm going to say this is equal to 8 right here, and then down here I'm going to say this is going to be equal to, I don't know, 16. And now we're going to say that int foo is equal to j plus k, and then we'll just do a console.log, and you know, what we'll get is we'll get the, uh, the JavaScript. Well, JavaScript will do the summation for us, and then it's going to do a console log of an integer complete with a new line. And this is foo right here. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll save that using Notepad. Having done that, we can then do a JS win run. And JS win run will begin the POSIX JavaScript um, conversion, and it'll end up producing a runnable that we can just, you know, type in. We should be able to just select that JS run and run it, and there's your 24, which, which makes sense. Let me just type out um, our source. Yeah, so there's our lines of source if we just type that out. So we got our j equals 8, j equals 16. Of course, the sum of that is going to be, right, of course, it's going to be 24, which is what we got. That's, that's what we got on the console. So that's, you know, perfectly reasonable. Now, I'm not what you call a, a JavaScript, POSIX JavaScript Windows uh, expert, but at the very least, I can give it a try. Um, let me just, I'm just going to hit the up arrow to get back to Notepad. So I'm going to notepad the source. And what we should do is we should put in a couple more variables, or we could try maybe we could try maybe some math functions, right? I mean, maybe we could try some math functions. Um, no, I'm not, I'm not concerned. Hi there, Don. How you doing? Well, it's not really a suit. It's just a, um, just a jacket and tie. I thought it'd be appropriate to do a jacket and tie for uh, for the Windows POSIX JavaScript discussion. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, you basically got to get a subscription, and uh, and then you'll have access to everything. Okay, so all we're doing is summation here. Console.log seems to be working now. I'm wondering if, um, in a, oh, and if you're wondering what this is, this is. Uh, this is Windows, let's see, I don't know how to get more information from, the, I'll go to the control panel here. Um, the control panel, I know I see, I see I have Java here, the Java control panel. The new Java information, okay, so it's Java. So this is Oracle Java type stuff. Um, right click on this computer. I, I don't see a this computer. Yeah, there is no this computer. 
Well, actually, hold on a second. There's there is a way to do that. I think I can do E N V. Or is it E N V? Yeah, there we go. Capital E N V will give me the information I'm looking for, which says. Um, let's see, log name is Windows XP user, I'm using Notepad on Exchange 5, that's correct, yeah. So this is a Windows XP user currently running with four processors on Windows NT, and looks like the processor identifier is a Spark Fujitsu V9 Plus Genuine Oracle. So we're running a a genuine Oracle Spark Windows environment right now. The terminal is DOS 6.22, okay? Well, yeah, that's, that's what the environment says. If I check my environment, um, yeah, we've got, yeah, this is a Spark Genuine Oracle uh, Windows environment. The terminal is DOS 6.22, however, okay? Um, what was I doing? Oh yeah, I was using, uh, I was, I was take just a sec, let me get a directory. Yeah, okay, so this is a fairly large drive. There's not much here right now. I know I've got a Linux uh, Torvalds Windows XP lecture uh, from, that was from back in 2012. It's been hanging around this machine for quite some time. I'm going to have to take a look at that someday. Um, let me just use Notepad here again onto uh, the source file, the source JavaScript. And what I want to do is I want to see if I can do in JavaScript uh, a quick Fibonacci. Like we were trying Fibonacci, I think, the other day. So what I'll do is I'll say, okay, J is equal to zero. Here we'll say K is, is equal, to, equal to one. So we'll get our first few numbers and then maybe what we'll do is um, um, we'll use foo. Foo is as reasonable as any. So I think what I'll do is I'll do a, um, we'll put a label here called uh, looper. So is that looper? No, it should be L-O-O-P-E-R. Yeah, looper. Okay, we'll do a looper label or something like that. Hard to say. Or maybe we'll use a for loop. Yeah, we'll use a for loop. Four, and here we'll say foo equals one. We'll say foo less than ten. This will be foo plus plus, and then we'll do the math right here where we've got. Um, let's see, J, K, foo. Oh, we don't have another integer. We need another integer somehow. Not sure how this is going to work out. J, K, and M. We'll say, we'll say we got an integer M. Yeah, it's just some integer. We got no idea what it is. Anyway, next Fibonacci number is the correct. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. You're right. It would be. Um, Using camel case, it's next F I B O N A C C I Fibonacci number. Yeah, that would be, yeah, that looks right. Next Fibonacci number. Okay, yeah, we'll use that. We'll just stick this on one line here. So next F I B O N A C C I number. I guess I could have just did a cut and paste. <coughs> Equals. And we'll say J plus K. Uh-oh, I made a mistake in Notepad. Let me try that again. J plus K, like that. Next Fibonacci number equals J plus K. And then I think we got to rotate our numbers around. I think. Next Fib num. I guess I could have made it shorter. The trick is going to be to get this to, uh, to run in the JS win run environment. Um, let's see. Well, I guess we could do a console log right here. So we'll do a console log right here. And I'll say again, this is going to be a percent I. It's an integer, one, two, three, four. Another integer, percent I. Actually, let me just call this 
fib num, it's probably going to be at f i b fib num. Fib num, and then I'll put a, an integer here. Yeah, that should do it. Okay, this would give us the foo, and then the next Fibonacci number. Let me see if I can just highlight this and do it. Yeah, cut and paste seems to work. Okay, we'll do that. So that'll be the console log, and then I need the j equals to the k, and then we'll say the k equals whatever the Fibonacci number, next Fibonacci number was. That makes sense. Yeah. We can give that a try. And then, and then right here at the end of this uh, for loop, we'll do a console log right here of whatever the last number is coming out. Who knows what that is? Yeah. Okay, we'll give that a shot. Let me see if I can do a JS win run on that. Yeah, JS win run. Yeah, so JS win run, it, it computes and, and converts the input JavaScript into a Windows POSIX JavaScript binary. So it says the runtime is ready right here at JS run. So let's just highlight that and dump it right on the console and see what we get. Oh, there we go. Okay, so we're getting fibnum. There's our sum 24 there, but we are getting fibnum equals 1. Okay, 1 plus 2 is 3. The 3 plus the 2 is 5. The 5 plus the 3 is 8. 8 plus 5 is 13. That's all correct in the, uh, this is the Windows POSIX JavaScript environment. So it looks like we're getting correct data. Um, this last thing out here, though, I'm a little bit concerned because this is the same number as what was computed here. So I think what we should do is we should get Notepad and change the console log output from, from, the, from the JS win run. Okay? So I'm just going to go up and say Notepad source.js here. What we'll do is we'll change this right here. We'll just put in an extra new line and say final. We'll say final fibnum right there. And we don't need this anymore. We just need the next Fibonacci number, whatever that was. And you know what? We don't have to stop at 10. We, could, we can go up to, I don't know, maybe, let's do 20. Let's try all the way up to 20, okay? Okay, so we'll do that. Let me just clear this out and type the source. Type the source. Yeah, so there's our source. So there's our source right there with line numbers too, which is really kind of nice because at least in the DOS environment, um, what was it I was using? Yeah, okay, so I'm using DOS 6.22 is the terminal here with, with Notepad Editor. So with the notepad editor, okay, um, it's perfectly possible to type out your source and your source will automatically be given line numbers. You can actually see there's a couple blank lines at the bottom there that we don't really need, but everything's, everything looks about right. Okay, let's do a JS win run again. So JS win run um, will process that. It's instantly processed right away from POSIX JavaScript, we get a runtime. Um, now we're going up to, it looks like 20 is our JavaScript limit. So let's just run the JS run and one all the way up to 19. It goes up to one less and then it says final fibnum is 67.65. That looks about right, you know, but but the, is that really number 19 or is that number 1? Let me see, 1, 2, 3, 18. Yeah, it looks right. Looks right to me. Yeah. So anyway, let me, let me just uh, notepad that again. So we're going to notepad the source. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to take out, there's an extra blank line here. And there's a couple blank lines at the bottom we don't need. So why don't we just say... Well, 
whatever, I guess we can go to 32. We can try 32 here. That should give us the Fibonacci numbers up to Fibonacci number 31. Yeah. Oh, hello there. Yeah, so anyway, in the POSIX JavaScript environment, um, let's just save that. And again, we'll do a JS win run on that source. JS win run. Okay, so we get a JavaScript uh, compile, which is done by the Windows POSIX JavaScript. Um, well, no, you probably don't have the up-to-date notepad. Um, if you're using an up-to-date notepad, it should automatically switch over to Comic Sans uh, Serif font. You should be getting Comic Sans as your font automatically with the modern notepad. Um, this this notepad does a good job. Yeah, Notepad Professional Edition is exactly what we're talking about. Because in Notepad Professional Edition, it will show you if there's any blank lines. Um, let me just run this source now. Uh, this is our JS run. Well, there we go. That looks good. Look at that. One, two, three, five, eight, thirteen. And there it is. There's our Fibonacci numbers. And if we type out the source, there's our source. You know, um, is there Notepad Enterprise? Because Notepad Enterprise is probably going to be part of the Microsoft development environment um, probably later this month. Notepad Enterprise. With Notepad Enterprise, I'll bet you Notepad Enterprise will probably allow us to cut and paste and duplicate lines right inside Notepad because that hasn't been a feature that we've had for quite some time. So anyway, there's an example of the, uh, the JS, uh, the POSIX JavaScript uh, runtime environment in Windows. And again, um, if I check my environment, this is... Uh, Let's see. Yeah, Windows XP 5.1.2600. It says here 2001, Microsoft Corporation. That's kind of interesting. Um, but in my environment, it, it clearly says we're running, yeah, Win JavaScript was my login server with four processors. Uh, this is a Spark Fujitsu V9++ Genuine Oracle is the... Um, is the processor architecture and identifier for this machine in a DOS 6.22. So that being the case, I think um, that gives an idea of what we can do with Notepad and JavaScript. Again, let me just get in here and, oh, uh, I did something wrong. Did I, spell, did I spell my Notepad wrong? No, that's interesting. Hmm. Anyway, um, not sure if anybody wants to do anything else. I guess we could try... Nah, I don't know. I'm running out of ideas for, uh, for demonstrating the, the Windows POSIX JavaScript environment. Um, I think people get the general idea here. Is there any questions? Um, Well, it's, it's the kind of thing that a lot of people are not familiar with, which is the fact that there is a JS WinRun. Um, with JS WinRun built into Windows XP, um, your code gets automatically processed into a JavaScript runnable. And your JavaScript runnable, it, it's, it just basically runs your code. You know, I, I don't know what else to say. It can transpile to C++. Well, I think maybe it can actually convert to C. I think it gets converted to C, and you get a whole stack of, let me just see. I think you can get, you get output um, C somewhere, but I'm not too sure how you do that. It's, it's, in a, it's like a temporary directory type of thing that it 
Let me see. Let me type. It's in temp. Oh, there we go. Okay, so we get lots and lots of output um, conversion files. Uh, let me take a look at 890.c. Yeah, see? So there's the exact same code after it's been converted to C. Yeah. Anyway, folks, that's about as far as I can drag this out. Um, I hope you enjoy the... Uh, the uh, the JavaScript demonstration on uh, on Windows, um, you know the source, you know there it is. I mean, I don't know what else to do with it. You know, the JS WinRun process, of course, uh, I had to install because that's part of the enterprise upgrade package from Microsoft. Anyway, thanks for listening. Well, you know, um, this is how JavaScript gets compiled, uh, gets, well, not compiled. I mean, JavaScript isn't a compiled language, but in the Windows POSIX JavaScript environment, your JS WinRun, it, it will do the job of automatically detecting your source and producing an output binary for you. Well, it's not even an output binary, it's actually just part of your JS um, Windows environment. Let me just change the stream title now um, and switch over to, we're going to try something a little bit different. We'll do, uh, uh, we'll try POSIX uh, C on Unix is what we'll try. I think that's worthwhile to try now because we've already done the JavaScript. So POSIX C on Unix. There we go. I'm switching the title, all right, everybody? And now I can switch back over here and I can stop this, this line of vomit, which is starting to form in the back of my throat. Okay. Anyway, you like, you like the jacket? Um, this, is a, um, this is a Samuelson. So it's a Samuelson jacket, um, and yes, a tie, you know, which by the way, I'm taking that off right now, I can assure you. But I am wearing, you know, I am wearing a Windows, you know, Windows jacket, or Windows, uh, a Windows shirt, anyway. Okay. Not Tweety tie. No, it's not, but you know, I got my gold uh, clip and everything here. Anyway. Uh, give me a second. I'll be right back as just a boring C Unix type of thing. Okay? We'll give that a try. It's good for cleaning floors, but it also really does make excellent Kleenex if you got to blow your nose, okay? Run out of toilet paper, excellent, excellent, and comfortable too. <laughs>